name. And Father, we also thank you at this time for your word that we're about to receive this morning. We open our hearts to receive from you, Spirit of God. You're the author of the word, you're the teacher, and you're the one that brings the word to us. We thank you that faith comes and fear leaves. We thank you also that all our goals and plans and everything that we have in our hearts come in alignment with your plan and purpose. Thank you for guiding us. We receive from you, Holy Spirit, and nobody else in Jesus' name. And all those in agreement said, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we having a good time in church this morning? Yes, we are. I'd like to welcome those of you joining us online. Thank you for inviting us into your home and into your space. It's truly a privilege, and I want to thank the Lord Jesus for this opportunity. Pastor Theo, Dr. B, thank you so very much. And those of you that are home, and if you're home for reasons of health, we pray for your speedy recovery, and we know Jesus will keep you well. But if you're home just because you fill in the blank, then we'd love for you to join us and come and have worship with us. And if you want to wear a mask, feel free to do so. There's no condemnation to anyone. You do whatever you want to do. We also have place for social distancing, but we would love for you to gather with us. Amen. And thank you all for coming this morning. Praise God. I want to say that we as as CFC San Antonio are in a mission from God. Come on, I'm going to get everybody excited here this morning. I declare boldly that CFC San Antonio is here for such a time as this. We're here to make a difference for the Lord Jesus. A relatively small book of Esther tells us about a young lady by the name of Esther. Isn't it amazing that the book has got her name on it for all eternity? God put it in the Bible. And yet she was someone who God had blessed with favor. She was someone that God raised up and blessed with courage to save his people. And we see here in Esther chapter 4, verse 14, Mordecai, her uncle, speaking to her, says, What's more, who can say, but you have been elevated to the palace for such a time as this? Say this with me, an appointed time. (laughs) Times and seasons are something that God values highly. Esther, who had been orphaned at a young age, was adopted by her uncle named Mordecai, and was, he raised her as his own daughter. He raised Esther to stand for what she believed in, and that at the right time, she would do the right thing. Now, because of God's favor upon her and the beauty he blessed her with, she became the queen of Persia. Now, Persia was an empire that was vast. It stretched all the way from India and South Central Asia all the way through to the west, down through East Africa to Ethiopia. That is a seriously influential empire. Now, when Mordecai refuses to bow down to the king's officer, Haman, who was like the prime minister, Mordecai places himself in jeopardy because of his convictions. See, Mordecai and the Jews would bow down to no one other than Jehovah, the true God. And as a result, as time went by, Haman's hatred grew more and more for Mordecai and for the Jews. And so he conspires to destroy not only Mordecai, but the whole Jewish nation as well. And Haman's plan was that on one single day, March the 7th, that they would wipe out the Jewish people. And he gave an incentive to every person that whoever would commit this heinous act and go and murder men, women, children of that Jewish family could take that estate and all their wealth as their own. I'm sure he had many motivated murderers, (laughs) potential murderers. Now Mordecai urges Esther, and this is a serious place to be now, to appeal to the king on behalf of the people, knowing full well that if anyone appears in the court before the king without being invited, that they themselves would be killed. It was an offense punishable by death unless the king raised his golden scepter and stayed the execution. But nevertheless, Mordecai says to Esther in chapter 4, verse 13, Don't think for a moment, Esther, that you will escape there in the palace when all the other Jews are killed. What's more, Who can say but that you have been elevated to the palace for just such a time as this, an appointed time? 
Now surely if God had destined Esther for this, he would surely bear her through and give her success, right? Now CFC San Antonio, God has planted us here for such a time as this. And surely God will bear us up and give us good success. There is revival at Christian Family Church, and I declare there is revival in our city. Amen? Amen. Amen? Esther determines to stand before the king and intercedes on behalf of her people. And she says the following in verse 16. And though it is against the law, I will go to see the king. If I must die, I am willing to die. Now show me anyone who would utter words like that. These are very serious and heartfelt words uttered by Esther. They speak of boldness and courage. Now we might say, well, that's good for Esther. She was a special person. Obviously, God made her special. I couldn't do that. Well, I want us to all take note of the fact that God uses imperfect people. You, you want to know why? Because they're the only ones that are available. <laughs> now, Phyllis Bottom, a British novelist, said the following. She says, there are two ways of meeting difficulties. You alter the difficulty or you alter yourself. You either alter the difficulty or you alter yourself. We see here that Esther chose to alter herself. She says, I will go and see the king. And if I must die, I am willing to die. I mean, these were words of faith and courage. She said, I'm going to take that bold step of faith, and I'm going to leave the rest up to God. Now, Esther and Mordecai turned to God in this desperate time as their only refuge, because he alone is mighty to save. Amen. And they agreed to have a three-day fast, no food, no drink. And God, placing his favor on Esther and Mordecai, engineers that the Jewish nation is saved and Haman is caught in his own trap and executed. So what does this mean to you and me? How can we bring this closer to home? Many of us here might just be in that position where we feel like Mordecai and Esther there isn't necessarily an official hunting you down to kill you, but you think this pandemic is like nipping at your heels. The pressures of the economy are nipping at your heels. Your family has gone through things. I mean, we've been in a whirlwind of some sort or another. I don't think there's anyone that has not been affected in some way or another, pressed in on all sides. And you know, the amazing thing is I remember, recall as a young child playing the game of hide and seek. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Right, so the one friend would stand there with hands against the wall and count to 10. And while he's counting 10, you scat and hide in the bushes or wherever it might be. And then they turn around and hunt for you. And if they see you and touch you, you're it. Are you with me? And so the place where they were counting was called the den. It was the safe place. And in that game, the den is all that mattered. And I remember when they count 10 and come looking, I'd be hiding like this. And when I see the den is vacant with, with laser focus, I just looked at the den, not even breathing. I would just run and do my best. That's my focus. That was the only place I'd get to. And once I got into the den, I think, oh, thank Lord, I am safe. I am safe. And you know that Proverbs 18 verse 10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Say that with me. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to Him and are safe. I mean, this verse pictures to me our heavenly den, a strong tower, a fortress of security, of protection, when we know that God is for us. He is with us all the time, and this is a place of safety. His presence is there for us all the time. But just as Mordecai and Esther ran to God for deliverance and protection, who do we run to? I'm just asking myself, who do I run to? Who do you run to? You're watching online, who do you run to? When we go through trials in life and we're oppressed in every way and it's overwhelming, you know, our family has been going through difficulties, our finances are stretched and possibly you're lacking in some way, you're being unfairly treated at work or wherever you 
spend your time during the week, sickness and disease have been rampant throughout. How do we handle these situations? Persecuted for his name's sake, pressed in on many sides. The righteous run to him and are safe. You know, and just like the Jews were hated because of their desire for the true God and their desire for his values, the, word, the world presses us and wants us to conform to its values, to its way of thinking, to its, its way of doing things. To, and the reason the world presses us to conform us is to become more and more dependent on the world, to become dependent on them. I grew up as a young man in a, a communist environment in the Czech Republic. And I thank God that he, we escaped. It was a James Bond movie. We were smuggled out. My dad forged documents. and I can say it now because nobody's going to hold him accountable anymore. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, you can write a book on it, and I think I should maybe. It's a novel. It's a movie. I mean, smuggling and separated and, you know, and all the rest of it. And, and I know that if we hadn't gone to South Africa at that time, we would never have heard the gospel. Because in a communist environment, there's only one God, and that's the state. And only those in authority get everything, and everybody else is there to serve them. That's how the world thinks. Jesus said so. The kings and lords of this world are here to lord it over you. But God sets us free in Christ. So now remember, Phyllis Bottom, the words that she uttered, there are two ways of meeting difficulties. You alter the difficulties or you alter yourself. Now, God says that in His Word in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. I'm actually getting so hot and excited, I'm going to pop a button. Right, so. God says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Say that, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? So that we can prove what is the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God, right? But notice here, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. There, this represents a choice and a consequence. If I'm not being transformed, I am conforming. There's no vacuum in between. You're not hanging in space well, I'm not sure which one I want. Then you're conforming. But God desires that we be transformed, not to conform. Besides the very obvious difficulties around us, the world is pressing us to conform to its way of thinking, to its way of speaking, to its way of doing things. I mean, times gone by, these, some of the standards and values were based on godly principles, but now that's gone by the wayside, right? And as the world grows darker, the church grows brighter. I mean, today, it's almost like, you know, if you don't agree with us, if you don't conform, if you're not acceptable, you know, with these social media assumptions and rhetoric and all the stuff that's coming against us, you know, if you present an opposing, even a different opinion or argument in some way, we'll just cancel you out. It's like we're living in a video game. People think, I have all the power. I don't like the way this game's going. Uh -huh. Cancel, reset, <laughs> I'm in control. Right? We almost think it's like that. But reality strikes, this is not a video game. And our choices have consequences, eternal ones. Jesus makes use of the illustration of building on sand and building on a rock, Matthew chapter 7. I'm sure many of you have heard about that. If you want to read it, Matthew 7 verse 14. And a storm comes and beats down on both homes that are built on sand and on the rock. Now, the house built on the sand falls and fails, and the house built on the rock is secure and succeeds, prevails against the pressures. Now, I'm sure we all agree that building a building on just sand is foolish, right? But take note of this. This was external pressure applied. Both houses were built the same, I'm assuming. They both had something, space on the inside. The one's foundation was on sand, and the other one was built on the rock. 
When the wind blew, the one didn't have anything in to provide resistance, and the foundation was unstable, and so it, great was its fall. The one on the rock was stable. But if I can bring it to another illustration here. The house built on the rock, you know, if you, you, you all had touched one of these throughout the day, you have them, and when they closed and full, full of a valuable, precious resource, yeah. no matter how much pressure I apply to this, it still comes back to its original design. It resists, it's strong, it's stable. You can pack a whole bunch of these on top of each other and they will not collapse. There's something on the inside that's giving it the ability. However, if I'm lacking on the inside or have certain things that are not truth, are not based on value of God's Word, and I still have something, maybe attend church once a month. It's not for you. It's, I'll just, where did that come from? Anyway, you know, and in other words, I still have space on the inside, all right? And, you know, and the pressures come and the physical things and the world says this and my Facebook friend said that and somebody else says this and the news says that and that. And before I know it, the people at work, and before I know it, I find myself, I'm conforming from the external pressures and I don't look anything like God wants me to. Right? So am I a lost case? No, no, no. God is faithful. You're watching online, you feel like this, God is there for you. So what do I do with this? I need to return to the manufacturer. And the manufacturer puts the word inside of me. I come to church, I give my life to the Lord, I do whatever I need to do. God, I need you. I surrender to the Lord, to the manufacturer. He takes me and he inspires me once again. And I look like he designed me from the beginning. Praise the Lord. That's the only solution, family. We have to have the Word on the inside to fulfill the mission that God has put us here for, for the appointed time, to be able to walk this life day to day. It's not complicated. It's just about, let's just drink. Let's take it in. Let's spend time in the presence of God. If I spend time in His presence, it will be evident. If I don't spend time in His presence, probably evident too, right? I mean, I've been to the beach, and I'm sure all of you have been to the beach at some time or another, and you know the waves, and I actually want to go to the sea again, praise the Lord. Oh, oh wait, let me come back. And you know, and you sit down on the beach, and you put your towel down, and, and you sit down, and you feel, oh, but the sand's a little bit firm. And so, I don't know if you like that, but I kind of jiggle my rear a little bit, and make a little bit of an indentation, and back it up. And so, when I arrive, you know, I kind of, and so when I, now when I'm finished, the beach doesn't look like it did when I arrived. It's conformed to me. It's given me a comfortable place. And we find that in life when we conform, we might experience comfort for a temporary time, but it's not the place to stay. And when I get up, the beach is no longer the same. That sand is malleable. It moves. It's, it's got no foundation to it. It changed. But I also know what it's like sitting on the rock. And there are many rocky beaches that I've been on, that I've sat on the rock, I sit for a few moments, and I think, oh, something's happening. And when I get up and I look, I change. I have the pattern of the rock on me. The rock still looks the same, but I have this lizard skin all down here, and I'm thinking, <laughs> and I walk away different. The rock changes me. And so I, the rock is transformative. Everything else around us tries to get us to conform, but the Word of God is the rock. And you know, God compares Himself to the rock in 1 Samuel 2, verse 2, Psalm 18, Psalm 61. Because when we spend time with Him and rest in Him, we will change and become more like Christ all the time. Conforming is from the outside, whereas transforming takes place from the inside. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The ultimate safety is in the name of Jesus. He is mighty to save. Amen. Say that. God is mighty to save. Say this. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. I run to Him and I am safe. Even though we go through crisis, crisis doesn't grow our character. Crisis just reveals what's already on the inside. 
When the pressure off comes, think of those two homes. The storm came, same storm, both homes. The one had revealed that it was empty. There was gaps inside of it, and it collapsed. The one that stood on the rock and was filled with valuable truth, stand firm and survived and prospered. Our mission, family, is to take this city for Jesus. I don't think you heard me. Our mission is to take this city, San Antonio, for Jesus. Your mission is to take your city, your country, for Jesus. Now, this will require more than our talent and abilities, and I'm sure, you know, God will always put His super on our natural. And He's never going to ask us to do something that's impossible. That would be cruel. But He's going to ask us, every single one of us, to do something that requires His presence, our faith in our heart to do, or allow Him to do through us. We are His hands and feet, amen? God told Joshua, He says, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. CFC San Antonio, God is with us wherever we go. We just have to be bold and courageous, amen? So let's show courage. Let's be strong and courageous. Do not be dismayed or afraid. The Lord is with us. He is the rock. He is our Lord. Hallelujah. Woo! We're on the winning team. Yeah. Philippians 2 from verse 9 to 11 states truth. And what is the truth? That at the name of Jesus, or that in the name of Jesus, number one, is above all, and that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. So every problem, every pandemic, every created being, everything that is not of God, that is not God, will bow to the name of Jesus. What does that mean? I'm telling you now that every devil in this area must bow to the name of Jesus. The devil is defeated, foe. Any resistance offered in our city is bound in the name of Jesus. Jesus will build his church. He says, I will build my church. That tells me he takes it personally. He's personally invested in growing his family. And there's enough power in that scripture to grow the church from beginning to end and beyond. We don't have to do it. Let's just do our bit. Wherever you are, let's just use that opportunity and tell them that God loves them and invite them to church or pray with them, whatever it might be. I believe people are a lot more receptive than we realize. Every official in this area must bow. San Antonio belongs to Jesus. Amen? Amen. So God says, I will give you safety. I will give you protection. I will give you refuge. He is our den. He says, I am the one who is mighty to save. I am your deliverer. And every battle that you and I fight is a battle for freedom. So I want to say, let's fight for what we believe in. Are you with us? Let's fight for what we believe in. Let's us determine to fight for our city. Let's determine to fight for our families. Let's determine to fight for our neighbors. Let's pray for them. Let's determine to fight for our uh, work colleagues. You know, every one of us are placed in an environment where we are to touch the life of someone. There are people that I will come in contact with that you will, necessarily, will never see. And God has engineered it that way. So when you're in your place of work or wherever you move during the week, I mean, that's when we are actually in ministries, right, from here till next Sunday. Here we come to celebrate as a family, get pumped up, but we're in the ministry during the week. Okay, not so much amen there. But (laughs) But let's just fight this battle. Allow the Lord to lead you and guide you, right? Because I'm saying the spoils of of war are worth the battle. The spoils of war are worth the battle. God has placed us here all to make a difference. M-A-D. I'm a mad person for Jesus. How about you? Come on, are you making a difference for Jesus? We'll make some t-shirts. M-A-D for Jesus. Making a difference, right? Captain Mad. Hallelujah. (laughs) Now, family, on a serious note, we have another opportunity this coming weekend Can you think of anything better than my family, my friend, my work colleague, my neighbor, giving their life to Jesus, being born again on the resurrection weekend, the weekend we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus? Wow. Let's pull out all the stops. Amen? Let's just trust the Lord. 
But I'm not, I'm not bold enough, Pastor. Well, Proverbs 28, verse 1. Read that over and over, and you will be. The Bible says, The righteous are as bold as a lion. For greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Say that. Great is he that's in me. His name is Jesus. Than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. We're in a war, family. Let's keep focused. The spoils of war are worth the battle. You know, there's no problem that is too big for God's intervention. And there's no person in the sound of my voice or anywhere on this planet that is too small for God's attention. He loves every one of us and he's intimately interested in our well-being. And you know when David faced Goliath, small man versus big man, big giant, he was fully aware of the rewards that King Saul would bestow upon the champion that would whip Goliath's rear end. I caught myself in time, right? <laughs> Men fight for a reason. Women fight for a reason. They want to gain something. You're fighting to gain something you want. So CFC family, what do we want? We want to see the city saved. We want to see standing room only at Christian Family Church. We want to see many sites around. We want to fulfill the plan of God. And last weekend, they were doing some road works here, and there was a traffic jam. And I stood at the door. I said to some of the staff, I said, hey, I see this every service at Christian Family Church. Not road works, but traffic jam of people coming in, going out, because they're standing room only here at Christian Family Church. <laughs> Praise God. That's God's design. Amen? Amen? So the Lord is mighty to save. Now, CFC family, we have planted seeds. We have waited patiently for a harvest. It is time. God always keeps his appointments. Keep the expectation high. Let's just keep on keeping on. God is faithful. And faith is voice activated. So let's keep the miracle talk going. This is a house of miracles. The Spirit of God's presence in this place. Are you ready to do some faith talk? Yes. Come on now. Are you pumped up? Are you excited? Yes. Okay, well, I'm going to lead us in a confession. But keep on going, right? Are you ready? Yes. Say this with me. It'll come up on the screens, but you can repeat after me. Those of you at home, you can see it in the lower thirds. And say this with me. I can do all things through Christ all things who, strengthens who strengthens me. Christ in me Christ is greater than the devil greater. who is in the world. I have been given authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt me or my family. I take my shield of faith and quench every fiery dart of the enemy. Jesus is building His church, and the roadblocks of the enemy will not prevail against us. Whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever I loose on earth is loosed in heaven. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am filled with the knowledge of God's will, and I flow in His instructions as He leads me. My desire is to please my heavenly Father. I am the body of Christ, and I walk in divine health. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. I forbid any sickness or disease to operate in my body in the name of Jesus. My heavenly Father, He takes care of me, for He supplies all my needs according to His riches in glory. I honor God in His kingdom above all else. And as I give, it is given back to me in abundance. Wealth and riches are in my house, and my righteousness endures forever. I do not worry or have anxiety about anything. I do not have a care as I cast all my care upon the Lord. God is on my side. Come on, God is on my side. I am more than a conqueror through Christ. The battle is the Lord's and the victory is mine in Jesus' name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Hallelujah. And the righteous run to Him and are safe. We're a blessed people, family. So I'm a blessed person. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. We are here for such 
a time as this. If God before us, no one can be against us.